Shouldn't shopping be as much fun as summer itself? That's what Macy's Backstage is all about. We've got the finds you can't resist, the brands you love, swimwear, shorts, sandals, everything for outdoor entertaining, pool parties, and more. With new deals arriving every week at prices so low, you never need a coupon. And when you see something, get it, because it's here today, gone tomorrow. That's the excitement of never knowing what you'll find, but always finding something. And just like summer, there's no better feeling. Visit Macy'sBackstage.com for locations. We want to welcome you to another episode of MBKI's Kingdom Encounter on Blog Talk Radio. Prepare yourself and get ready and allow the Spirit of the Lord to transform your mind. And here's your host, Pastor Anthony Baxter. Hey man, welcome to Blog Talk Radio here. I do apologize, we're having some difficulties here. Okay, there we are, I do apologize. Uh, welcome to Blog Talk Radio, hallelujah. We just want to thank each and every person that is tuning in with us this Saturday afternoon. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's open up in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for your spirit and we invite you in. Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for what it is that you have prepared for us to receive. Lord God, hallelujah, this is a very touchy subject. Hallelujah, I pray, Father God, that people's minds may be open, their heart may be open, Father God, to what it is that you have to say. Hallelujah, the Bible says that the truth will set us free. We thank you for the truth of your word, hallelujah, that is coming from heaven down onto the earth. Let us receive it with thanksgiving and joy, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give praise and we give honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, amen, and amen, amen, hallelujah. Glory be to God. People of God, I just want to thank you once again, hallelujah, for coming on. I want to thank God for being the head of my life, hallelujah. I want to thank God for our covering, hallelujah. Apostle, hallelujah. Uh, Jonas Clark and his wife, Pastor Rhonda Clark, hallelujah, Rivers of Life Ministry, hallelujah, in Hollandale, Florida. I want to thank God for my lovely wife, hallelujah. And for all you guys that are tuning in and those that will be listening in to the archives, I thank God for each and every one of you. Again, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties here in the beginning of this segment. Hallelujah, we should have all that stuff together, but the enemy always tries to come in with something, especially when it's a word that he does not want to go forth. Amen. Glory be to God. So we're going to be looking at a couple of different scriptures. So if you can, write these down. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 2. Verse 23 and 24, we're also going to be looking at Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, as well as Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God created sex, but the world has taken it to a whole nother level? If we look everywhere we turn, we're seeing sex here, we're seeing sex there. We listen to a song where there's sex in the song. We watch a movie, there's sex in the movie. There's sex all over the place. So as we have sex going into our ear gate and our eye gate, hallelujah, it's beginning to pervert, hallelujah, the law that was set in place dealing with sex. How many of you know that there is a law that was set by God? dealing with sex amen so yeah now you know that god is the creator and judge of all things amen he also set spiritual laws in place to keep his creation in check and to judge us in the end time hallelujah so these things that he has set in place he set in place for a reason and we have an adversary that wants us to go against the law are the commandments that were set for us to abide by. Amen? So for our God to be a judge, there has to be a standard set. There has to be something set. Hallelujah. My question to you is, what is that standard? Where 
does the standard come from? Why, I'm glad you asked. The living word, the Bible, basically has the commands. It has the statutes. It has the way that we are to live life. I call it the instruction manual. You know, uh, I used to say, if you take and get a box of something and you open it up, the first thing you're going to see is the instructions. But what most of us do, or I just keep it to myself, what I do is I throw the instructions away because I assume that I'm intelligent enough to put this thing together myself. But I don't know if many of you are like me. How many of you go back to the garbage can and shake off the coffee grinds and last night's dinner off the instructions because you couldn't do it without the instructions? We cannot live this life upon the earth pleasing to God without the word of God and the instructions that he has given us. Amen. Glory be to God. So by the law set in place, excuse me, I'm sorry, by the law set in place by God, sex was allowed. He created sex. There was a purpose behind sex. Amen. But it was allowed only to marry folk. Adam and Eve, married folk, okay, male and female. Let me say that again, male and female. So I'm talking about sex between a male and a female, not two men, not two women, but a male and a female is the sexual relations that God has allowed in the law that he set upon the earth. Any other way is considered sin in the eyes of God and his law, in the eyes of God, in his law. Turn with me real quick. Go to chapter 1 of Genesis and uh, go to verse 28. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 reads this. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful. And multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. What is he saying? He's saying have sex, multiply, fill the earth, and have power and dominion over what I've created. This is what he's telling us. So it shows us here that he has given us the right to have sex, but you have to be married. You have to be married. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 23, and we're going to look at verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. And it reads, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So what is this? This is the union of marriage that God has ordained for his creation Upon the earth. So we see where God has given man the right to have sex. We also see where God has given them the right to have sex in the union of a marriage. In the union of a marriage. Again, people have got sex outside of God's law, around sexual relations is illegal and gives legal right to the accuser. Again, sex outside of God's law, legal right to the accuser of the brethren, Satan. Why? Because there is a legal right, but there's also, if you step outside of the boundaries, you're illegal. If you are going 100 miles an hour down a 45-mile-an-hour road, you have legally broken the law, and they can arrest you. There's nothing that a judge can do but say you're guilty. You were going too fast. Now, 
as we commit a sin of sex relations, we are found guilty by the law. There's nothing that God can do for us until we make a move. Remember that, until we make a move. But until we make that move, there's nothing that he can do but find us guilty. Why do you think they call Satan the accuser? He's accusing the brethren day and night. Why? Because we fall into sin. And he goes to the judge and to the courthouse and say, look it, Anthony has done A, B, or C. And if I have not repented of my sin, there is no pardon. There is no mercy. There is no grace. So I am found guilty. And what does that do? It gives the accuser the ability of coming into my life and wreaking havoc until I come before the Lord and humbly repent. Humbly repent. People of God, this is going to be a message. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. It's going to be around three or four parts because there's many parts to this. The church does not want to touch, and some of the leaders don't even know about some of the information that I'm going to be sharing with you when it comes to sexual sins and the things that you open up in your life. Many of us are dealing with things based upon the sexual sins that we have committed in our life. Most of us are being tormented because of particular things that we have done sexually in our life. Hallelujah. So we're going to deal with this on today, but I'm not going to leave you wounded. <laughs> we're going to have some solutions to these things. Okay, so y'all just ride with me, okay? If, you, if you're listening to the archives, join us next week, amen, because a lot of the solutions are going to be given in the part three and the part four, but we need to see ourselves. We need to see this thing. We need to begin to go to the Lord and repent for some of these things, some of these accents, some of these ways that we have in things we are doing, amen? Glory be to God. Turn with me to chapter six of Genesis. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Amen. It says, Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of man, that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves, for all whom they chose, from all in whom they chose. What is the same? The angels, the watchers. You see, there were angels that were watching over God's creation. Okay? But they were led astray. They, 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 they begin to desire God's creation instead of just watching over God's creation. Amen? So they left their post, and having the affections for earthly beings went into them and had giants, or better yet called Nephilims. So you'll see some versions will say giants. I don't think the King James, New King James doesn't really speak. If you go into uh, 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 the Geneva Bible, some of the older, more uh, uh, original uh, text Bibles, they will say giants, and they're talking about the Nephilims. Amen? Glory be to God. These angels, falling angels, led by a particular demonic spirit, demon, hallelujah, sent by Satan. He was a general of the watchers, we can call them, of the falling angels that were watchers, amen. The name is Samyaza, S-A-M-Y-A-Z-A. -A -A. You can look it up yourself, okay? He taught humanity, or these falling angels taught humanity arts, technologies as far as weaponry, cosmetics, sorcery, and other things which were forbidden by heaven. Now, you can look it up yourself. Go to the book of Enoch. Look in chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. Okay? So this is talking about the creation in the beginning. Okay? Now, if you remember, Enoch, hallelujah, was taken up alive to heaven. He did not die and go to heaven. He was taken by God up to heaven. 
Amen. So hallelujah. We can see here that there's particular things on the earth today that we use that were given by these fallen angels to the women. Hallelujah. Glory be to God and the men. Hallelujah. The weaponries. Hallelujah. That are still being used today. But we don't see the root of where it started from. This is the root, women. This is the root of some of the cosmetic and things that are that have come about. Am I saying it's wrong to wear makeup? I'm not going there. All I'm doing is letting you know where the root started at. You can go to Enoch chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. It speaks upon that. Amen. Satan is a mastermind. You know, you get individuals that say Satan is stupid, he's dumb, he's this and that. No. Uh-uh. You got to realize he has a kingdom that has many different levels to it. He knows most people better than most people know themselves. He's so cunning, so baffling, he, he'll sneak in a way, and when you think you're watching, he'll come another way. He's a mastermind. He knows how to get or how to pull or draw an individual into something if they are not strong in the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. He has taken and perverted what God has ordained upon the earth. Sexual lust is something that God has given man for his wife and, and wife for his, his, her husband, a desire for sex to multiply, to increase. But what Satan has done is he's taken it outside the law of God to separate us from our father and his kingdom. Here's, a, here's just three sexual sins that we'll find in the Bible. Adultery. What is adultery? Unlawful sex involving at least one married person. Fornication. Pornography. Whoredom. Incest. Lack of moral restraint. Habitual immorality, meaning sexual fantasies that lead to masturbation. Amen. Listen, I'm going to stop there for a minute. You know, you'll watch television... And today, Satan has corrupted, hallelujah, the movie industry, but they have women walking around with no bras on TV, and you can see all of everything, amen? And what does that do with the man that's dealing with the lust demon? That takes him to a place in his mind to where he's going to the bathroom to where he can relieve himself based upon what he's thinking. And you even have women that have that same problem. So don't get it twisted. Amen. Glory be to God. Uncleanness often refers to homosexuality and lesbianism. And laudness, unshamed indecency. What is that saying? You get people that just walk around just showing everything. They got pieces of clothes on. They get, there's more flesh showing than clothes on their body. And they have no shame to their game. Okay. Unbridled lust, just going after everything. Amen. These are the rapists. These are the, 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 the child rapists. They just have no, their lust is just uh, an unrestrained privacy. Okay, these are individuals that will have sex in your lawn in the middle of the day. Amen. They'll sit on the top of their car and have sex on top of their car in the middle of rush hour traffic. They just don't care. There's, they just don't care. Amen. You know any folks like that? Were you like that? <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Listen, much of what we are dealing with is because of the rights we gave or have given to Satan by illegal sexual acts. A lot of what we are dealing with, some of the consequences of our fornication, some of the consequences of our adultery, some of the consequences of of our uncleanness because, see, there's some people today that are serving the Lord, but they are walking in lesbianism. There are some people serving the Lord today, and they're walking in homosexuality, and they are paying a price because you're moving illegally, which means that God cannot show his mercy 
to where now you have things coming against you and your life and your anointing and your purpose and your destiny and your family based upon your action. Now, remember again, people of God, God gave us and now he said, if you come to me and you repent of your sin, I will forgive you. We have an advocate. We have Christ Jesus that sits on the right-hand side and intercedes on our behalf. But his intercession is no good if we continue to go out and do the exact same thing over and over and over. See, there's something about repentance. Repentance means churning from a thing. It doesn't mean saying I'm sorry and running back to that thing a week or two weeks or three weeks later. Yes, sometimes when you're trying to overcome something, you can stumble and fall. Hallelujah. But sometimes when you just want to cover up something that you got found out in, hallelujah, you say I'm sorry, and you go to God, you say I'm sorry. But in your mind and in your heart, you can't wait to go right back into that thing again. I've been there. Hallelujah. Listen, we're talking about the sin nature, people. We're talking about the sin nature, the fleshly nature. Amen. Here, here, do this. Go with me to Genesis chapter 3, and, 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 and let's go to verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, we're going go to go to verse 6. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. It says this. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and they ate. And they ate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that's the first thing it says, good for food, looked like all the other fruit. So how could it kill me? How could it do something wrong? I mean, all these folks that having sex, I don't see nothing happening to them. So why can't I? It looks okay to me is what we say around this sex thing. See, Eve compared the fruit to all the other fruit that she had the permission to eat. But she decided to look at it and see that there wasn't, really wasn't too much of a difference. didn't have spikes in it or something that would injure me that looked different. Amen? It says also that that it was pleasant to her eye. It had a beauty. It was something about it. Maybe she was just really hungry at the time, and the sweat off the fruit was dripping off of it, and maybe the color of it was so ripe, you know, that, that it just tantalized her eyes, the eye gate. It tantalized her eye gate with its beauty. It captured her mind. How many men are captured by the looks of a woman? How many women are captured by the looks of a man when you see his, his, his physical uh, framework or, or a woman's uh, physical framework? It just captures you. Amen? And then it says that uh, it looked to have some type – there was something that she could get. The tree uh, could be desired to make one wise, to make one wise, thinking what it could do, what she could do, what he could do, what this sexual act could do, desire to make one wise, thinking. But the thing that she forgot to think about was God said, do not eat of this fruit of the tree. After the enemy came in and made her begin to think and doubt the word of God, deception rose and she began to ponder. People of God, God has said that we are not to have sex outside of marriage. That's the word of God. Any and everything else, the laws that have come into this earth 
same-sex marriages, all this stuff does not outweigh the word of God. Don't be like Eve because we know the end result. It says she ate of the fruit. They wouldn't have sex. You wouldn't have sex. Then it goes on to talk about in the next few verses how God came in and laid down the law. People of God, there's going to come a time where we have to stand before our maker. And he is going to judge us by his word. Not by what President Obama said or or President Trump or any of these other presidents, but by his word. And if his word is not the final say in your life, especially around this marriage thing, around this sex thing, you may find yourself paying a high price. You may find yourself paying a high price. Hallelujah. There's not too much more today that I I, I want to speak upon. I just want to focus today upon the law. There's a spiritual commandment, a law that was set. And as long as you are following and obeying that law, that's a doorway that the enemy cannot come in. But I will share this with you. There are two gates that the enemy uses over and over again. They're his strong points. They're the gate of your mouth and the gate of your penis are your, your uh, uh, private parts. <laughs> Put it like that. Sex is a very strong thing, very strong. Why? Because God has given it to us. But the enemy has used it against us to pull us away from our maker. So next week, we're going to be coming together once again, and we're going to be talking about the consequences that will show up from sexual sin in the spirit realm as well as in the natural realm. So stay tuned. One other thing I want you to know. To come out of a cage, you must first know that you're a cage. Are you committing any sexual sins? If you are, repent. Turn from your sins and walk with the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to share your word with your people. Father God, I pray that those that have walked in sexual sin, Father God, that this word may have touched them, may it cut like a knife, that they may turn, Father God, and repent and walk according to your will and your way. Those that don't know you, Father God, I pray that their spirits may come in alignment with yours, that they may invite you into their heart and their life, that they may walk according to your will forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Join us next week. Tell a friend. Hallelujah, that we're talking about sex on Kingdom Encounter Radio. God bless you, and you have a fantastic week. Thank you for tuning in to MBKI's Kingdom Encounter on Blog Talk Radio. Stay tuned for another encounter next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, send your prayer requests and questions to our email at mbkministries at gmail.com. People of God, we thank you. Be blessed and remember, walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. So here's this heart.
Shouldn't shopping be as much fun as summer itself? That's what Macy's Backstage is all about. We've got the finds you can't resist, the brands you love, swimwear, shorts, sandals, everything for outdoor entertaining, pool parties, and more. With new deals arriving every week at prices so low, you never need a coupon. And when you see something, get it, because it's here today, gone tomorrow. That's the excitement of never knowing what you'll find, but always finding something. And just like summer, there's no better feeling. Visit Macy'sBackstage.com for locations. Shouldn't shopping be as much fun as summer itself? That's what Macy's Backstage is all about. We've got the finds you can't resist, the brands you love, swimwear, shorts, sandals, everything for outdoor entertaining, pool parties, and more. With new deals arriving every week at prices so low, you never need a coupon. And when you see something, get it, because it's here today, gone tomorrow. That's the excitement of never knowing what you'll find, but always finding something. And just like summer, there's no better feeling. Visit Macy'sBackstage.com for locations.